I bet you didn't know that Northwest Arkansas is responsible for 80,000 tons of food waste a year. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But my next guest did. I'm here today with Michael Krauss from Food Loops, which is a company based out of Rogers that deals with food waste and a lot of other things. But they were at the Roots Festival and I had a chance to meet them. And you're going to hear all about Michael Krauss and Food Loops next on this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilbur. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and today I'm excited to have Michael Krauss here from Food Loops based in Rogers. And uh, Michael and I actually met, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about that as we get into this podcast, but I'm just excited to have Michael here with me today. He's uh, joined me in my other office, and I'm using air quotes now because my other office, for those of you that have listened to this podcast for a while, is Sometimes I I do record at the Fayetteville Public Library, which is one of my favorite places on earth. It's one of the nicest libraries I've ever been in 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 my life, and it's going to get only better when they finish that extension. So without further ado, Michael Krause, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing really good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good, good. So, So Michael, you are a project manager at Food Loops, and I would love for you to just tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your background. Mm. Yeah, me. So from Indianapolis, I went to high school there. You know, we were just talking about playing basketball absolutely, back in uh, Naptown and uh, went to the U of A for college. Okay. Uh, I had brothers that went to Indiana and Purdue. They always bickered about the rivalry. So <laughs> I left and uh, went to uh, the U of A, studied rhetoric, communication. Okay. Graduated in 14. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. We talk about the intersection between, you know, kind of my background and how Food Loops came to be. And my route there was, you know, my senior year of college, I actually rode a bicycle around Fayetteville. Okay. And I was picking up food waste. I was working with feed communities. I was picking up food waste from places like Arcegas and other places. And then I went on to do a couple different things. And then Tom Rohr, our founder, approached me, gosh, 17, summer of 17 and said, hey, you want to join on a project, which was a which was a whole bunch of ideas at the time, right. which turned into Food Loops. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Every time I hear the name, I, you know, in the back of my mind, I, I'm, I, I see this toucan because I think of Fruit Loops, yeah. but Food <laughs> Loops, I mean, I, I love it. And so we actually met. I mean, it was kind of weird. I mean, not weird, but I mean, I was volunteering for the Roots Festival because that was just fun to do. And big shout out to Jeremy Gawthorpe yeah. and his whole team, the, the Roots Festival. It was my first time participating in the Roots Festival. Won't be the last. My wife and I, We did volunteer several times. It was really hot out there, but we had a lot of fun. But you and I connected during one of those days out there at the Pratt Place, and and you guys were doing some some really cool things there. And we just got to talking. And 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 the thing that I was really impressed about was that's one of your services. I mean, Food Loops does a number of different things, but and we're going we're going to get into that. But you you kind of are trying to create this whole zero waste event. Yeah. And uh, I would love for you just to kind of share your participation in the Roots Festival. And what you guys were able to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. No. So, I mean, one of our mantras is we try to meet people where they are and help them live more sustainably, mm-hmm. right? And that, that means we can meet folks on either side of the spectrum and we can help them to do things with less of a footprint, right? So, when I met with Jeremy and Brian and, and Bernice with Roots Festival, they'd already been doing that. They were already doing an incredible job of taking care of their waste for, you know, eight, seven, eight years before we got there. And then last year, I reached out to them and, um, you know, it was difficult for them. And yeah. so we decided, hey, well, why don't we help out with this project? And so this year, a year later, we took over the waste for the whole event. So 10,000 people, four or five different venues. And what we do is we set up waste stations. And you saw it, you know, folks bring the waste to our table. We sort it into a compost bin, into a couple different recycling bins, and then to a trash. 
And uh, it was very organized, I might add. So I yeah, mean, it was not. It wasn't even organized chaos. It was just like man, yeah. it, it, it was almost as if people understood when they came to the tables with their empty plates and cups and right. everything where to put stuff, and then you guys took it from there. Yeah. Well, yeah. You see this big banner. It says waste station. Right. And then it, it doesn't feel familiar because you're used to a trash can. But then you walk up to us. Our hands are out, and we say, "Put it on the table." We say, "Thank you." Not a lot of trash cans say, "Thank you." No. And then you're kind of feeling like that <laughs> trash man special. just thanked me. Right. Right. You know, we then we sort everything accordingly, and after the event, we send we send data, right? And so, for example, I mean, I'm, this is really exciting, but with Roots Festival, we diverted ninety five percent of the waste from that event. Wow! Yeah, and it was something like four or five thousand pounds of food waste and compostable products that we diverted. A couple hundred, I think, over a thousand pounds of recycling, and just a couple hundred pounds of trash. Man. That's ten thousand people. That's a week worth. And they spent they sent five percent of the waste from that event to a landfill. That's not. I mean, you don't you don't hear that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sitting here like, wow, I can't believe that. I, I mean, geez, that that's a huge change and a shift in terms of how we think about waste. And, and for us, we hitched on their wagon originally, right? So they've been doing something so good for so long, and we took it over and we made it better and we made it easier in terms of, you know, they got a lot to worry about. They don't need to be worrying about waste, mm -hmm. but they care about it, right? Yeah. And that's where a lot of people are. They're like, I would love to do something better with my waste. I have no idea how to do it. So that's where we come in. We say, let us handle that for you. And then by the end of it, if we do all these things right, we'll get up to 95% diverting from your waste, right? So, you know, we're just trying to prove that it's possible, that it's easy. And we, we know the impact, right? I mean, we can look at the numbers and just say, golly, you know. It's huge. So does it take you guys long to calculate all this, the, you know, the, the waste that was processed in all of that? Well, you know, on the back end, it's pretty easy. It's just weighed. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we brought in an organics dumpster. We weigh it. We know how much food waste we had. You okay. know, same thing, recycling and trash. That, that stuff's pretty easy. And the infrastructure on the front end, it's just planning. You know, you just got to make sure you got the race, like at Roots Festival, mm -hmm. do we have the waste stations in the right place? Right. Do we have the right amount of people at those places? Do all the chefs, all the folks involved in the culinary event have the compostable products, right? Yeah. That's key there. Yeah. And they do an incredible job, right? They source, everything's compostable there. And so, you know, just taking care of those things in the front end, so it runs really smoothly from there on out. From there on out, yeah. So, yeah, because there, there wasn't, I don't think I saw styrofoam anywhere. There wasn't yeah. um, straws, uh, any type of, mm -mm. you know, there was a lot of. And the forks you ate off or ate from were made of corn. Corn. The plates yeah. were sugar cane. Yes. The cups are, you know, they're called PLA. It's it's a corn-based, it's 100% plant-based. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's where we're going. You know, every, you know, it's always funny when you watch, whenever you watch science fiction movies or anything <laughs> in the future, when they show or demonstrate how people are using food, there never seems to be any waste with anything. Everything right. is utilized and then you kind of go from there. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. I think eventually as a society, we will get there. Yeah. It'll it'll take time and, and clearly you guys are at the forefront of that. But but what so how are you getting the word out to people in, in terms of what you guys are able to do for events like the Roots Festival and mm, others. Mm -hmm. So is that, I'm assuming that you're leveraging what you were able to do with Roots with, with other organizations? Absolutely. Yeah. No. And, uh, you know, when we first began, we did a wedding over at the Botanical Gardens of the Ozarks. Okay. You know, you're at a wedding and a couple of people notice and they say, I really want to do that. So you get a couple more calls, you get a couple more calls. So events are a really good way to reach out for us in terms yeah. of just you see what you want. And then and then it's just simple. You know, you, you just we just try to make it really easy on folks. And so when they see that it's not there's no barrier entry, well, then then it makes it really, you know, accessible to folks. Okay. And so we found a good fit. And some of these really big events, you know, we, we did Bite NWA this year. Okay. We did Roots Festival. We did um, Heartland Summit, which was a thirteen and 14,000 person concert in Bentonville. And we've done a couple of events at Crystal Bridges and we'll do some at the Momentary coming up. So, you know, you know, there's a, there's a current, there's a movement of folks who want to be more sustainable, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, we're a tight knit community here in Northwest Arkansas. So as soon as you kind of start in that world, right. the world knows. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, when you told me about the podcast, so I think that is, um, that's huge. And especially with some of our corporate citizens in this area, Oh yeah, the Tysons, the JB Hunts, the Walmarts, I mean, you get them involved. It, yeah. it, it, it can, it can, 
it can make a huge difference quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really exciting. So tell me about some of the other things that that Food Loops does. I know you, you guys do. You have a residential food waste program, food waste pickup, mm -hmm. uh, nutrient rich compost that you make available, and some compostable products. So, what are you guys doing? I mean, where do, where are you finding is the need that you th you feel like you're filling? Oh yeah, that's a good question. So timeline, you know, when we first started, we just had a truck and we we're just picking up food waste from restaurants, right? And so we started at, I think you had Matthew Cooper here. We started his restaurant, uh, sure. Preacher Son. It was mm -hmm. our very first pickup, right? Yeah, their and, food's okay. Yes, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Their food waste is great, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. I'm uh, sure. <laughs> so we we just started picking up from them, and then from there we added a couple more customers. But what we found, right, was that there was there were disposable forks, plastic forks in there, or you know different things that it was an issue for us. Yeah. And so we decided very early, some sometime early in 2018, let's sell compostable products. Mm -hmm. Right. That was a solution for us. Yeah. And that became a very, very value-added solution for us because now we could go to these same folks and say, hey, instead of buying that single-use plastic that's made of petroleum, buy this, which is made of plants. We put it in our compost. We take it to Rogers. We're composting it, you know, instead of that going to the landfill. So not only are we diverting food waste, we're diverting plates and cups and forks and knives. So all those, so the, you know, when you look at a chart, like a pie chart of waste that's going to the landfill, 20%, and this, this figure is all over the map, but about 20% of that is food waste, right? And there's a big portion of that that is single-use plastics or paper cups or plates or things. Well, we're able to cut into all of that by sourcing compostable products and putting that all in the same bin, right? Yeah. We take that to our facility. We grind it up. We're composting. So we actually don't have our own facility at this point. We're hopefully building that very <laughs> soon, right? So we grind it up. We take it to the city of Fayetteville. Okay. And they do all of our composting for us. We buy back compost from them, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because they're doing it for us, but we're out there selling it, right? So it is a, it's a really great, I mean, it's an amazing compost because you have, you have compost and then you've got food waste compost. Right. A lot more microbial activity, very Nutrients, nutrient dense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean it, it's, a, it's a terrific product. And so this fall, we're getting into, you know, selling a lot of that, you know, usually in the spring, the fall, you're selling a lot of compost. And so people are using that nutrient-rich compost in their gardens and, yeah. and just... Well, I mean, all over. Yeah. 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 Gardens. Plants, house plants. Yeah. You can, okay. I mean, you can, you can put in some potted plants, but most applications would be you know, your garden or a top dressing on a soil. You know, I mean, there's, I mean, lots of folks use it to regenerate soil, to bring back health, right. to eliminate erosion, hold water in. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of benefits of it. Well, I love, I love that. And We'll have to make sure that we put in the show notes how people can get some of this compost and, yeah. and pick it up. I mean, it's just beautiful dirt that <laughs> that makes a difference. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, I, I would love to do that. But so, wh what are you guys? I mean, obviously, you haven't been around for a long time, but I think Northwest Arkansas is kind of ripe for this mm, movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, recycling has become big, mm -hmm. even though I still think that like the city of Fayetteville could do a better job at how they recycle. But that's also coming from somebody that lived in Berkeley for for several years, and so they. <laughs> They do things a little differently out there, and they've been doing that for a couple of decades now. Yeah. But um, but I think we're getting there. I think I think people are just becoming more aware. Mm -hmm. How do you generate that awareness so people just realize that? Oh my God, we have options. Right. Well, I mean, truth be told, in Northwest Arkansas, every year we waste eighty thousand tons of food waste. Ooh, man. Nationally, that number is about fifty-two million tons of food waste a year, and we, as a country capture about 2 million tons a year. That leaves 50 million tons of food waste on the table that we are not capturing, right? Yeah. So for us, it's just a problem, right? We start with the problem. How do we fix the problem? And then you've got early adopters who have been worrying about that problem, obviously. Like they've been in it. They don't like throwing things away. So as soon as, you know, there's a solution, they jump on board, right? And and there's been nothing to say yes to in Northwest Arkansas. It's not, it's not like there's been somebody else trying to collect food waste. There's right. been no one doing it. It's the only option has been the landfill. Yeah. Right. And maybe maybe you have some mix that a farmer could take. But other than that, you know, your your options are the landfill. So now there's a yes. There's there's an opportunity for folks. And so for us to get that word out, got you know, doing stuff like this really helps. Absolutely. But Absolutely. no, the chef community is pretty tight, right? Oh, I know. So, you know, we pick up at quite a few restaurants. The options are out there. But we're looking at a lot of other clients, too. I mean, we want to do offices. We're in a couple offices now. 
and give people the option. Because so, for example, we sell compostable products, mm -hmm. right? Now, let's say you get a compostable product and that goes out the door, right? It's not going into the food waste receptacle at that restaurant. Well, now it's gone home and it's probably going to land up, uh, you know, likely in a landfill, right? So we want to get build an infrastructure where we can capture that, right? So let's set up at your office, let's set up a food waste collection bin. So everyone in that office can throw their food waste in. And let's also, you can bring, you know, your compostable products that you took from home, put them in there. Or, and you mentioned this, our residential program. So we started this at the beginning of the summer, I guess when the farmer's market started. Mm -hmm. And and that's just, it's a five-gallon bucket, super simple. And you, you just put all your food waste in, you bring it to the farmer's market, we give you a clean one. And you can put your compostable products in that too. And that's it? That's it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, are people... I mean, we used to, I used to compost back at home and, and before we moved here to Northwest Arkansas. And I remember even our, even the city of Boston at the time was, gave you, offered you a composter. Yeah. And they gave you a little thing to sit on your, which I get some people don't like it, but to sit like in your sink area in your kitchen where right. when you come up with some food waste, you dump it in there. Mm -hmm. And then our goal would be is to get that thing into the composter <laughs> fairly quickly, you know, right. but. But I can remember a couple of seasons. I mean, we we created some pretty rich soil. Absolutely. And uh, there was all kinds of stuff in there. And it was, I mean, it it wasn't, a lot of times people think, oh, man, this is just going to stink. But it really wasn't like that. And I think what the, what the end product is worth it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm, so, you know, the I hear that smell issue a lot. And that's just, you know, just resistance to anything new. Absolutely. Right? But for us, we pick up two or three times a week. Sometimes we pick up four or five times a week, depending on, you know, the volume of the place. So we're removing that, that quote unquote stink pretty quick, which otherwise you'd put in your dumpster anyways. So, yeah. um, you know, a little tit for tat there. But, you know, inside for the residents, yeah, I mean, they got to bring it to the farmer's market. They got to do, they're an active participant in that. So mm -hmm. it's a subscription program you actually have to opt into, right? And so they, you know, you got a lid on your bucket. People do different things, you know, like my wife and I, we put it in the freezer before we put it in the food waste bucket, right? Just okay. to keep the smell down for a Yeah, bit. yeah, yeah. That works. And then, th so for the residential program, do the residents pay for it or they just, they do, they pay for yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then they pay for it and then you then in turn take that and um, compost it or do Yeah. We well, do. we got to take it all the way to, to Rogers. Yeah. We got to grind it. Yeah. Right. And then we take it to Fayetteville to have it composted. Yeah, it's. I mean, you know, it's the circle of life for food that we that we don't really think about because that circle is not. It's it, right now. It's um, it's kind of like a half circle, right? Oh yeah. I mean, it, we're missing out on the other piece of it where yeah. we put it back in. And when you think of how you know, probably how things were done a couple of hundred years ago, even. I mean, I I think that we might have handled things differently. Mm -hmm. So I think it's 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 education. Yeah. And you guys must be spending a lot of time just educating people. You know, you would think so. Well, I guess yeah, when we onboard a client, we will we definitely handhold. You know, we would we make sure they know what's going in there cuz we take when you say food waste, even that is not there's it's not a global term. Right. You know, because we take we take meat, bones, fish, dairy, raw, cooked. You can put anything in there. And a lot of compost bins at your house, you don't want to put meat in, you don't want to put dairy in, right? right, right. So when we say no, put everything in, it's like wait you said everything? Everything. Everything. Put yeah. it all in. And this compostable plate. Oh. Oh, okay. I mean, because our goal is to make it so easy. You throw compostable products in any food waste in and we'll compost it. Right. But we've, we've kind of parceled it up over the years to where we think in terms of my backyard or we think of my last city, how right. they did it. Or, yeah. And so, you know, long-term vision, I mean, gosh, we, we would love to see this across the United States in, in, a, in a more you know, unified way where where every compost facility is taking compostable products, where we're, you know, compost is, you know, a household name, right? Is there a food waste association? Uh, well, so there's a, yeah, there's a compost, what's it called? Yeah, yeah, there, there are groups, uh, nonprofits across the country and, and in Europe, yeah, they're unifying places like this, yeah. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an owner of a restaurant or a food truck here locally in, in NWA, and I'm listening to this podcast and I'm thinking, you know what, this, this guy makes some sense. I want to, to, to be a part of, of what the community is doing to try to recapture some of this yeah. waste. How do I get involved? Yeah. Well, so foodloops.net, you can contact us from there. 
You can put my phone number on everything. Have them all call uh, 479-755-4511. Okay. You heard it, folks. Yeah. Give him a call. So, so we've, we've got a hauler. So his name is Richard Ems. Okay. And he started a company called Food Recycling Solutions. And so he's been, and that's kind of under the Food Loops umbrella. It's a partner of ours. Okay. And so he has, you know, we've got a real truck now. Right. Uh, so it's, it looks and plays like a trash truck. It can haul seven tons at a time. He gives you a big bin. You fill it up with food waste. And we use a color system. I should mention this. You're wearing a beautiful red shirt that the the red bin is food for food waste. Okay. So at Roots Festival, you saw the red is for right. food waste. In restaurants, red is for food waste. Okay. And we want that color to stick because what has happened is green has been the color for compost, for recycling. And now it's for the, everything. Now it's the, and now it's a color for trash in a lot of places. Yeah. I mean, there's some trash companies out there that your trash can out in front of your house is green. It's super confusing. It's very confusing. So we were like, well, let's just let's let's not adopt that system at all. Let's make our own. Yeah. And so red is food waste, white is glass, blue is recycling, black is landfill. And so for us, that identification when we go to an event or when you see a red bin outside of a restaurant or a hotel or a hospital, you know, oh, that's the food waste bin. Right. And right. We, we want to draw people into that communi- like uh, nonverbal communication, that mm-hmm. visual. And so you don't just see it, you experience it, right? You're going and you're, you're in a community where there's red bins everywhere, right? Yeah. And we talk about quality of life too. I mean, there are communities that one of the judgments, right? One of the criteria are, you know, how sustainable is this community? Right. Well, we want to draw Northwest Arkansas right into the top of that list. Like, yeah. We want to make this a flagship for sustainability. Yeah, we were talking about blue zones, and 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 that was one of the episodes uh, where we had Tony Butner on, and um, one of the founders of the Blue Zone Project, and you know they're considering Northwest Arkansas to be part of that, and certainly what you guys are doing at Food Loops kind of dovetails nicely into that that whole mindset oh, and yeah. idea, and it is a mindset. I mean, you have to want to do this. I honestly didn't spend a lot of time recycling before I, I moved to Berkeley, but when I got to Berkeley. When I lived there out in California, it was like, first of all, they're, they are hardcore about their recycling. They're hardcore about a lot of stuff, but they're recycling especially. And the thing that I always found interesting was that after a while, it became a way of life. It became a thought process. And oh, yeah. I thought differently. And that was, man, that was, I moved there in like the early 90s and lived there for six years. And I still, to this day, carry that mindset. Yeah. It has well, never left. It, yeah. Know. It works. Yeah. Yeah, and and you talked about education and awareness, right? When people understand the issue, you mm-hmm. know, when we say eighty thousand tons of food waste every year, I mean that's a, that's huge, and that 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 can connect with folks. Or you could come to an event and just, hey, you want to let's you know look inside the organic stumps. That's how much was going to the landfill, right? Yeah, and we and we send all of our partners, right? So wherever we pick up, we send them the weights of what we picked up during that that month, right? So they get a they get a C they get it on their piece of paper right it says you know we they diverted four tons of food waste this month from us and that's something you can share with your employees you can share with your team you can share with the folks because you know, it's encouraging. Well, I mean, just sitting here now, I'm sure Jeremy was over the moon to be able to tell people that hey, the Roots Festival, you know, we had almost zero environmental impact. You know, some people may say, well, there's noise pollution, but I mean, come on, what are you going to do about that? Yeah. But I mean, zero, almost zero in, environmental impact when it came to all of the waste associated yeah. with yeah. putting on an event exactly. like that. Yep. That's huge. Mm-hmm. I'll take 5% any day. So <laughs> right, that's, yeah. that's not bad. Yeah. So what are you doing to, to kind of get out in front to some of these new events that are happening now? Or how are you, I'm about to put it on an event. I mean, you know, what, how can Food Loops help me? Yeah. Well, we still knock on doors. Okay. I mean, we still call. You know, it's probably, it was a fun moment, I think, when we started getting calls, mm-hmm. right? Because forever, you know, so Tom, the founder, when he brought me on, right? This was before we were called Food Loops, before we ever picked up food waste. All we did was go do meetings with people. We'd go shake hands and meet people and try to figure out what is the need here? What do people care about? What how can we help, right? Yeah. And we did that for three or four months for maybe five or six months before we ever picked up any food waste, right? And we still carry that mentality on our team, I think, to where we're going to go out and we're going to capture, we're going to knock on doors, right? And if somebody's wanting to have a zero waste event, for example, or to have their restaurants, you know, have to start picking up food waste, you know, like I said, we handhold 
at least for a month, right? So we're going to walk you through it. We're going to talk you through it. We're going to meet at your place. We're going to walk through the, your kitchen. You know, we just started at some schools up in, in Rogers and Bentonville. And that that's a tough one, right? Because that is a very institutional, I don't know, fabric right mm-hmm. there that you got to change it and tweak it. But we're right there helping. You know, and it's funny you mentioned that because I remember listening to an episode of Ozarks at Large and and um, I always like to throw out there these other shows that exist in this area because they certainly predate us by a long shot. And what Kyle Kellums and the rest of his team do on, on K- at uh, KUAF, is, uh, our NPR station, is amazing. But they had an episode where they talked to one of the buyers that dealt with the school lunches for faithful yeah, public Alan schools. Rochek. Yeah, and – but the thing that we people don't realize is that, you know, a lot of times when they're committing to something, they're committing to it for the long term. So right. they make an investment. So it's not like they can just all of a sudden tomorrow stop using this type of tray or this type of thing for right. food. But over time, yeah. they can do that. And so so you guys are are being active and, and proactive about going out and connecting with these schools and showing 100%. them the little ways that they can start to increase yeah. their footprint when it comes to yeah, food. Yeah, in a little way, I like that you said that, you know – Meet them where they at, help them become more sustainable. Yeah. It, you do not have to go zero to hero. Yeah. Right. We can do phases. We can go slow. What's your next step? How does this work for your organization? For example, we, we pick up food waste from Tyson headquarters now. Okay. And, you know, there's 2,500 people in that office. And do we have three or four steps laid out? Absolutely. What was the easiest low-hanging fruit? Right. So we start picking back at the house of the kitchen. That is a beautiful place to start. Yeah. Instead of dealing with 2,500 people, let's deal with 10 in the kitchen. They know where to put it, know where it goes, and that's going to handle X percent of the food waste. That's a big part of the problem. Well, then let's snowball that. Let's push that down the hill and let's make let's capture all of it. Let's start switching over your plastics to compostables. You know, all those things are like you don't have to hit a home run, right? Let's just Let's just attack it at your pace and keep going with it. Well, it's the mantra that I operate with where I, I'm constantly saying, just get 1% better every day. That is the model that I live by. It's actually the t-shirts that we had made up for I Am Northwest Arkansas. It's this idea that all we're trying to do is get 1% better every day. Mm-hmm. If we do that, then our, our ability to increase and do better at what we're doing and make an impact in the world yeah. will ultimately happen. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. And the same way that that I'm saying that is the same way that I, I see what you guys at Food Loops and what you're doing is ultimately just going to take on a life of its own mm-hmm. to the point where maybe in four or five years it just becomes you're you're truly a household name mm-hmm. and it's like oh man these yeah just call Food Loops they'll do it having a wedding call Food Loops mm-hmm. having an event call Food Loops <laughs> right. you know like, just do it Fruit Loops no Food <laughs> yeah. Loops just yeah just, we'll get there yeah we'll get there so I think that's that's really um, it's just important to recognize, and I, I certainly want people in Northwest Arkansas to know that there are organizations like Food Loops and others that are doing everything that they can to create awareness, and, yeah. and that awareness ultimately will stimulate the change that we so desperately seek. And if I could, I mean, add something. When Tom began it, and he used to say this an awful lot, the goal was how do I make Northwest Arkansas better, right? How do we push this area to the next level? And so food waste for us was a huge problem that everyone was looking around saying, who's going to fix that? Right. Well, then we just jumped on that bandwagon, right? That's it. That's it. A need, I mean, there's always needs that, that exist that people don't realize. And, you know, I, I learned a long time ago being an entrepreneur is that when you can – if you can solve a person's problem – You've got an opportunity yeah. to do something. And, yeah. and uh, certainly w- what you guys are doing is solving a problem. And, yeah. you know, Roots has benefited from it. Other organizations have benefited from it. And I, I'm assuming it will only grow over time. So yeah. that's exciting. So tell me, what are some of your other – what are the other things about NWA that you really like? And Because and, mm-hmm. we, we, we've talked about, you know, Food Loops. We've talked about your your – prowess on the basketball court. And, yeah, uh, right. You went to school here. Your brothers were there, stayed in Indiana. But what has Northwest Arkansas meant to you? Well, you know, like everybody else, I landed here, was going to leave and never left. And uh, <laughs> I hear that a lot. Yeah, it's true. It's not a trap either. It was a good choice. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we got a one-year-old now. Okay. And, um, and we got one on the way. And so our family is, you know, we're rooted here now. Yeah. And I, I love... Where we live, we live in 
Tawny Town. Okay. And so we see sunsets. We can see the Milky Way. We can see, uh, you know, beautiful stars. And uh, we got an acre of land, some chickens out there, you know. And we're 10, 15 minutes from Fayetteville, no. Bentonville, yeah. from everything out here. And, uh, you know, I got here in 2010 and was very Fayetteville-centric, as all college students are. And it's been fun to experience the rest of Northwest Arkansas, you know, as we start a business in Rogers and do a lot of work in Bentonville and just to – the people are so incredible here. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a mindset that's um, opportunistic. I mean, people see – I think people see it as a, a fertile ground. Yeah. Um, and so it's a good place to to live, certainly with, as, with a family, and it's a great place to, you know, be starting a business. There's a, a lot of hands out there that are willing to help. Absolutely. that's And that's I say that all the time, and I know I, I, I kind of overuse it, but I have yet to meet somebody that's not been helpful to me in some way. <laughs> yeah, right. People are just like that. That's just how they are. Yeah. And um, I'm very impressed by that spirit. It is a spirit, I think, that 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 exists here in Northwest Arkansas. Not that you, not that it doesn't exist in other places, but listen, I mean, it, you got to be excited about where you are, and if you aren't, then you need to find a new place to be. Yeah. And certainly, you've been here almost a decade now, and and uh, I certainly applaud you for the stakes that you have uh, put here. And and like you said, your your kids are from here, and so yeah, you'll, you'll build on little it Arkansans. There. Yeah, there you right. go. You'll build on that. So before we close out. What do you guys like to do besides look at the the sunsets and the Milky Way from your acre of land there in mm-hmm. Tawny Town? What else do you like to do? What are what are some of the things that that you guys take in when when you have some free time? Mm, free here time, in Northwest Arkansas. With a, I know it's it's not not much. With no, it's a great question. You know, my wife and I are big into arts. Okay, so going to shows, Walton Arts Center, going to Theater Squared. You know, this weekend we just saw a show in Tulsa. Uh, oh, nice! Yeah, it was it was Hamilton. It was really good. Oh, I heard. So, yeah, that's so right. Good. I heard. That's right. It was here. It was here for a couple of weeks. I, I know. Think, we're so. like, we're like, here's your college fund, buddy. Yeah, Sorry, you're not going to college exactly. anymore. Exactly. That's hilarious. But, but you know, it, you know, we, and I love that exists and it thrives here. And again, I feel like I live in the middle of nowhere. and can go to incredible shows. Blue Man Group's coming up. And that's right here in, in, in Northwest <laughs> yeah. Arkansas. Right. I mean, you bring up a good point though, because a lot of times when people say, Oh, well, what do you what what do you do in Northwest Arkansas? And I'm like, Oh, you'd be surprised. Um yeah. a lot of stuff happens here. I mean, and if and if it doesn't happen right in this general vicinity, I like to think of like Tulsa as the regional area, right? Tulsa is like an 126 miles from here, and there's a lot going on there. They have a very rich art scene. It's a very historical area, the the Gilcrease Museum. I mean, there's a lot to do there. So mm-hmm. when people that are thinking of relocating to Northwest Arkansas or even live here, I would just say, get out of your shell, check it out yeah. because there's a lot to do. Yeah. And and uh, the BOK Arena, which is amazing, yeah. that's a Cesar Pelli designed arena. And for those of you that don't know who Cesar Pelli is, he's an outstanding, he's a living, le- living legend when it comes to architects. And I only know that because I, I work in that industry, but I, I just, you know, there's just a lot, there's a lot around yeah. here. So yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot, though. What Favorite restaurant. Where do you, where do you like to go break mm. bread? And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a place that, that works with Food Loops. Oh, no. It's a place that works with oh, Food Loops. Oh, it is. Loops. Okay. All right. That's I'll fine. name them all, in fact. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I really do care about responsible restaurants. Absolutely. I care about restaurants that will get local ingredients. I care about restaurants that will be responsible with their waste and collect food waste. So, I mean, I'm incredibly biased towards... You know, folks that work with Food Loops, and that, and that's a growing number, which I'm thankful because when my folks come to town, I'm like, hey, let's go to this place, right? And it used to be one place. <laughs> uh, no, and and that, you know now there's lots of options. You know, I'd be put on the spot for a restaurant. Uh, I also don't get out enough, but um, that's okay. That's it happens with kids. I've got yeah. three, and you know, I sometimes never see the well, light of day. Good when it comes cook. Come on, well, there you go. Yeah. So, come on over. You're invited. Tawny Town. I'll that's be right. there for sure. I yeah. know where it is. Just follow so. the dirt road. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, that's cool. No, I mean that's it's it's the thing I like about Northwest Arkansas. There's so many good spots, and at, the thing I've learned about I've learned about places from people that have been on guests on the show that they've told me about. Hey, you should check out this place or go here and. A lot of little haunts and and uh, places to to check out. So I think it's it's. You know, just, I'll give you one. I'll okay. give you one. And I'm hesitant to give one, but you know, you it's, asked. It's fine. I'm gonna put my chips in. No, I, I really like Snack Lab. Have you heard of Snack Lab? I've heard of it. I've you never been there. So okay. they've got two two locations now: one in Rogers, one in Bentonville. And uh, 
I mean, I'm very biased. We take their food waste. They source in a lot of compostable products. But I, I mean, I love that. Yeah. I mean, they're doing, to me, the responsible thing. And they were a leader. You right. know, they were one of our early adopters in terms of taking uh, sourcing compostable products. We learned with them. They learned with us. Mm-hmm. But they do a really good job. And it's healthy. And What's your of, favorite item on at Snack Lab? Oh, man. Uh, I got a... Some kind of bowl the other day. What did I get? Yeah, they got good shakes too, or, okay. or smoothies. I guess smoothies. health smoothies, shakes. Is, I'm hesitant to it's even fine. say what I got, but try their bowls. Their bowls. Try their bowls. Yeah. Okay, so like protein bowls and yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we'll have to we'll put the a link to Snack Lab on the um, the show notes so people know exactly where it is and. We'll also put a link to Michael's house on the show notes. Yeah, so they can that's right. I'm just kidding. Come on over. So, yeah. No, but, uh, well, Mike, I, I really appreciate it, man. Um, it's been again, fun. You, you really blessed me with the story that you told me before we actually started talking about the podcast. And that's exactly the reason why I'm doing this. And I, I shared this uh, last week, and, and I want to share it again this week because it is so important to me. But my why certainly exists for a number of reasons. But I got a review and anybody that that listens to this podcast, you can give a review wherever you listen to it, iTunes or wherever. But I got this great review from somebody and it says, I was recruited by a local hospital to my job in NWA. I am from Southeast Arkansas and I had never really looked into what the region had to offer. Stumbled on this podcast a few months before the move and was quickly interested in the area and keeping notes on all the things going on. This show may cover the intersection of entrepreneurship and culture, but the community is what keeps me coming back. Keep up the good work, NWA. I'm proud to say I love my community and that of the surrounding cities. And a lot of that is due to this show guiding me on all the happenings. This is, I mean, this is it in a nutshell. And anybody that's listening, I'm not pining for reviews. I just was excited when I got this review and I shared it on an episode previously last week, but I just got this review. And you know, I, I just, that's why I'm doing this podcast is to share people like Michael and Food Loops and all the amazing things that are happening right here in Northwest Arkansas. If you're not from here and you're thinking about relocating, you need to come check us out. You need to come take a closer look. Do what my wife and I did. We came here and spent a week mm, mm-hmm. before we moved here. Because, you know, there are people that are listening to this that may or, you know, may be coming here to relocate for Walmart or J.B. Hunt or Tyson or one of the suppliers. I mean, you fill in the blanks. Or maybe eventually you'll be recruiting people to come work at Food Loops one day. So that's a good problem to have. But anyway, Northwest Arkansas is a great place. Come check it out. See what it's all about. Every weekend we don't have a Roots Festival, but there's there always seems to be something happening. Yeah. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So Michael Krause, thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show. We thank really you. appreciate it. Uh, folks, check them out. Foodloops.net. Just think of Fruit Loops, but with the word food and then L-O-O-P-S dot net. We will put a link on the show notes to Michael, the rest of the team, his phone number, all the great stuff that we talked about on this particular episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. As always, I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I appreciate you. Please continue listening to the podcast, share it both near and far, and anyone that you know that you're trying to convince to come to Northwest Arkansas, I think this podcast can help. So let them check it out and go from there. Anyway, that's all I have for this week. We will be back next week, Monday, 12 noon, with another great episode. We look forward to seeing you then. And um, you can always find us at IamNorthwestArkansas.com. Take care and have a great day. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.